What's up internet stranger friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Carissa and I have been doing daily videos all of December. It's been crazy. I'll leave a link for you to catch up on the playlist down below. Today's video is all about what I would pack on a ski vacation or what you should bring to stay warm in a colder climate. If you guys didn't know, I've been snowboarding for just shy of 20 years, so I'm an OG on the mountain, and this is what I would suggest to bring. This is my current gear setup, so I'm excited to share it with you. I got some new pieces this season. Huge shout out to Burton for sponsoring me on a couple of pieces. This isn't a sponsored video, but they did gift me a couple of things. So if you've never been somewhere really cold, the first thing that you really need to know about cold climates is that you need to layer. Layering properly is absolutely crucial in cold weather because if your bottom or first layer gets wet, it basically acts as like a magnet to cold or to more dampness which is what you want to avoid. So typically what I like to do is take some form of thermal or some skinnier, thinner underlayer to go on absolutely first, and that kind of wicks the sweat away from my body so that I don't get uncomfortable. These are what mine look like. These are from Burton. They are the dry ride material. As you can see, they are a thinner, stretchier fabric. And so this goes on as my first layer. The cool thing about these particular Burton ones is they are more of like a midi length so that it doesn't go underneath your riding socks so that you don't have too bulky of a sock. So this basically hits me just at ankle. The top is matching and it is long sleeve, just like that. While we're already talking about socks, let's talk about socks. Uh, for years, I've gone back and forth between regular socks and proper snowboarding socks. Sometimes you'll find a regular sock that works totally fine inside of your boot. It basically just comes down to what you are comfortable in. Uh, this past few seasons, I've been riding with these. They were a gift from my mom. These are a Burton riding sock, and I do believe that it is a little bit less thick in certain parts of the sock so that it doesn't put pressure inside of your boot. The biggest thing is, is that you want to make sure that whatever you have is going to work before you get out on the mountain, because once you're already out there, then you're stuck, you're screwed. So my tip for you, if possible, if you're not renting snowboard gear, is to wear your boots and your socks around your house, just to kind of get your feet used to what it feels like. If it works, great. If it doesn't, then you can adjust. You're basically looking for something that is thick enough to keep you warm, but thin enough to not be obstructive in your boot. Personally, I like to go for socks that are almost thinner than thicker. I find that that works better for me. You do definitely want a long sock though. You don't want something that's gonna be an ankle sock that'll cut off really, really low because if that slips and goes underneath in the boot, you're gonna be uncomfortable all day. Socks can absolutely be a make or break for your day because it can be so uncomfortable if it's wrong. So just make sure that you are set up properly. Okay, this next thing is actually so funny because this didn't exist when I was a kid and when I was learning how to snowboard and now it's a thing for people. What it is, is like a tailbone guard and it is a little set of basically shorts that you pull up and wear this protected part over top of your tailbone. So if you fall, it kind of gives you a little bit of cushion and protection. Uh, when we were kids, my dad used to like cut up chunks of like styrofoam and like shove it down our butts or like just random like, I don't know, rubber mats or anything that could kind of give you a little bit of cushion that's what we had in our ski suits growing up so this is incredible if you are a newer snowboarder you fall a lot this could definitely be a purchase that would be smart for you or a really great Christmas present last minute so this is what my base layer looks like all on it looks rather hilarious I know my second layer is a fleece layer and this is the fleece that I've been currently wearing it is a merino wool one from icebreaker I didn't purchase this my mom got it for me for a gift but this is what it looks like uh, merino wool and fleece are really, really popular things for this next layer as it's breathable, but it's very warm. Uh, I personally require the jacket to have a full zipper because then you are able to unzip if you do get too hot throughout the day. It's nice to be able to adjust your layers. If you were wearing something like a cotton hoodie underneath as your layer, that would be an absolutely horrible choice as the cotton would get wet, you'd get cold, it would collect snow, and you could also not unzip it. My final base layer completely depends on what the weather is like. Remember that when you're at the bottom of the hill, it's a different temperature to when you're at the top of the hill and also there probably will be wind chill as well so make sure you factor that in 
if it is a freezing cold day and I'm already like, holy shit, this is cold and I'm at the bottom of the mountain, I probably will add one more layer. These are awesome. This was another gift. Uh, it's from Patagonia. It is a downfilled vest. This is not a vegan item. If you are someone that is looking for a vegan item, you probably can find synthetic versions of these, though I don't know how comparable they are. The beautiful thing about down is that it keeps you warm when you need to be warm, but again, it doesn't overheat you. So this is a perfect thing to chuck on underneath your jacket to get that extra little layer of warmth. Again, it is a front zip, so you can easily adjust whether or not you want it fully zipped up or not. And it doesn't have a hood or anything obstructive to kind of get in the way of your layers. This is, for me, a forever item. I very likely will never have to replace this as it is super well made and it's black and it's something that I can use all the time, be it dressy or non-dressy. I will still wear this in the city underneath some of my like lighter kind of jackets. Okay, so you are on your outer layer. You are gonna need some snow pants. <laughs> these are my snow pants as you can see these are brand new this is what Burton sent me I'm so excited to try them out as they're a different shape to the pants that I've been currently riding with these are a set of Burton pants that I purchased maybe six or seven years ago I've been riding with these for a long time and they have held up so well they still look like they're awesome condition that's the coolest thing about Burton gear and why I was so absolutely enthused that they sent me product is I've been a Burton girl since I started snowboarding. I remember going to ski swaps and for those of you who don't live in a cold climate you have no idea what I'm talking about but ski swaps are where families will bring their old gear that their kids grew out of and kind of trade and swap and buy other people's stuff so that it's more affordable because it is really expensive to gear up in a full thing of snow gear and if you were lucky enough to get a Burton whatever in that ski swap it was just like oh, man they lucked out so I don't know I just I'm so grateful and just absolutely tickled pink that they would ever have sent me things I just feel so blessed and so grateful so huge thank you to Burton I'm forever a fan your very last layer is your jacket and this one is mine I like bright gear so it was really weird choosing a darker jacket but all of the rest of my gear is bright so I kind of had to go normal somewhere uh, it has a hood it has two very deep pockets on either side and my favorite part about this jacket that I haven't had with jackets in the past is that this jacket the design of the back is quite a bit longer. It's nice to have an extra layer between you and the snow. <laughs> the only thing that I will say about this jacket is I do think that my previous Burton jackets had a better phone pocket placement. When you do it up and you have your jacket on, they always have in kind of the zippered area, they have a little spot for your phone. I think that this is way too low compared to their other jackets. I feel like their other jackets pocket kind of sat just right over here and in this jacket the pocket sits right here. And the problem with that being is when I put my phone in and my phone is pretend my hand. So if it's sitting right there and I'm sideways snowboarding, every time that I crunch to turn and every single time that I'm making a move, my phone kept crunching in on my body. So that's the only thing about this jacket that I wasn't jazzed about. I'm going to have to use a different pocket for where I'm going to put my phone. But other than that, beautiful jacket. All right, so your last few finishing touches. I would absolutely recommend to bring a neck warmer. Like 100%, this is my life-saving thing. I love the ones that are long tubes. So when you put them on, you can kind of drag them up. So it sits like this, and then when you are cold, you just push that up like that. It's nice to have something that has a bit of extra room so that you can bring it up to shield your face. On that note, I do not like riding with scarves and I would really recommend getting one of these versus using a scarf. Scarves can be really annoying because you have to wrap them, you have to place them, they fall down and shift. This just stays in place. When I pull it up, it stays up. When I push it down, it stays down. It's way more comfortable than riding with a scarf. The next item, in my opinion, is the most important thing other than your snowboard to have in your snowboard kit and that is your helmet. I don't understand why people ride without helmets. It is the stupidest thing you could possibly do. Brain injuries are no fucking joke. Borrow it, rent it, buy it, do what you need to do, but have a friggin' helmet. If you are somebody that gets cold really, really quickly, you can also wear something underneath your helmet. Personally, I don't need to. I find that just my helmet keeps me warm enough, but if you were to want something underneath your helmet, I would suggest getting a really skin tight, thin toque versus something that is thicker and has more room because if you're trying to shove this inside of your helmet, it's not going to work nearly as well as something that's kind of tight and flat to your head. 
And if you buy one, you can cover them in cool stickers like I have. Along with your helmet, you will need some goggles. I purchased these ones last year. They are from Oakley. I love, love, love these. The only thing is when you are purchasing goggles, be aware that if the lens is super dark, you might not be able to see very well on days where it is overcast or snowing. I'm probably gonna have to buy a secondary lens so I can swap these on really dark days. As we very briefly touched on in the sock portion of the video, you're gonna need some boots. These are the ones that I've been riding for years. Uh, these are a pair of 32s. The way that these are done up is the boot itself, you put your foot in, and then this first kind of tongue velcros or attaches in some way to the front. And then the second layer is how you actually tighten the boot to your foot. Uh, these ones you just pull on the strings. They're really, really simple. The biggest thing is your boot just needs to be comfortable and it needs to work. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what brand it is. Just make sure that you are comfortable in what you're wearing. Speaking of comfortable, this is a tip that I started using a couple of years ago and it's made my days outboarding so much more pleasurable. Uh, I have my gloves, but I also have a pair of inner gloves. Layering your gloves, my friends, is the way to do it. Definitely try the layering trick of having this bottom layer in before you have your glove layer. It's great because especially when you are fixing something or taking your hand out of the glove, your hand isn't just left bare to the elements. It's really nice. So I've been doing that and I also make sure to loop the loop over top of my snow gear so that when I take my glove off, it just dangles and doesn't fall. And this is totally a common sense thing, but it'll save you so much time. Try at the end of the day to clip your gloves together. There's a little tiny clip on the edge of it. If you just clip that to the other clip, you won't lose your gloves. And oh my God, if you lose your gloves, it is the worst feeling in the world. So do take care of these. In my snowboard bag, I also keep a regular toque. And I like this for after the day is done. I usually have the worst helmet hair. So it's nice to chuck something on and not have to deal with like my disgusting helmet hair. So I keep this little sucker in the bottom of my bag. And last but not least, the piece of equipment that you really are gonna need to get out on the hill and that is your board and or your skis. This is one of the boards that I am currently riding. This is the Burton Socialite. It is set up with the Burton Lexa EST bindings. They are just a crank binding, they look like that. The board I was gifted and the bindings I purchased myself. If I step back, you can see the whole board in frame. It is a beautiful galaxy print. I love the graphics on this particular board. What I love about the Burton Socialite is that this board is a very, very bendy, playful board. So I don't really know if you can see, but even by just doing this, I can flex it and bend it. And so that gives me the ability to be a little bit more playful when I ride. Having a soft board like this, you're able to do tricks easier or go in the park easier or kind of just pop up and manipulate and maneuver the board a little bit easier. With that said though, if you have a soft board in deep powder, that's not gonna work very well. Every board on the market has particular strengths and weaknesses for what conditions work well for that particular board. The board that I was riding previously to riding this one was the Burton Feel Good, and that was much more of a all around the mountain board. It handled itself really well at good speeds. It handled itself really well in powder. It could do park stuff, but it wasn't as springy as this board is. Uh, but every single board, like I said, has different pluses and minuses to it. For the style of riding that I do, I like to have more of a freestyle board, and now I'm getting into more of a park style board. So that is everything that I pack in my snowboard bag, but I wanted to include a couple of things that I always put inside of my snowboard jacket when I go snowboarding, because it's just essentials to me. The first thing being lip chap, and oh my God, you do not want to forget this. Your lips will get so dry and so cracked on the hill, at some point you very likely are gonna want lip chap. So I always pack some. I always pack some type of snack in my snowboard pants pocket. Uh, I have a protein bar in there most of the time to get a little bit of extra energy. You never know, you can be hungry or you can be stuck out on the mountain. It's just nice to have some form of food with you. Obviously you can melt snow for water if need be. Another thing I always make sure to bring in my pocket is some cash. You never know if you're gonna need it. Sometimes for whatever reason, there's cash only places, especially if you go to like the backside of a mountain, they might not have like a debit machine. So it's nice to have a little bit of cash in case you wanna grab some lunch or whatever. I don't have any here to show you, but sometimes I will bring some Kleenex and just put it in my pocket. Your nose gets really sniffly and just, 
when you're on the hill and it's just nice to have something to wipe your nose on a lot of different gloves have like a little like fleece part on the thumb so you can kind of wipe your nose with your thumb but uh, it's nice to have a little bit of Kleenex if you need it also if you are new to a ski hill and you've never been skiing like I said your nose is gonna get very 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 clogged very likely we do something called snot rockets you plug one side and you blow you're welcome and since I'm a vlogger, I almost always take an extra battery. Something to note is in cold weather, batteries act weird. So being your camera or your phone or whatever have you, you will have way less battery life in a cold climate. The last thing I have to show you isn't a necessity for your ski trip, but it makes life a hell of a lot easier. And that is a proper snowboard bag. This is mine. This is actually the first time I've ever owned like a proper board carrying bag. As you can see, it's super long and snowboard shaped. Um, I used to put my stuff in more of like just a duffel bag and then keep the snowboard separate, but it's just so nice to be able to throw everything in one bag. I'd really, really recommend checking those out if you are traveling or if you plan on doing like a longer extended trip. These are really handy. So this is everything that I would be bringing on a snowboard trip. I hope you guys found today's video helpful. I do want to also point out after you're done your snowboard day, make sure you lay your gear out properly to air out. There is nothing more disgusting than putting on gear that is wet from your previous use. Hang everything up, spread it all out, let it dry. I feel like my father saying this. I hope you guys found this video helpful if you're planning any winter travel. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in a new video very soon. Bye.